So good morning, as you can see we're not in the observatory today. I'm just getting ready to drive for five hours up to the Autumn Equinox Star Party up at Kelling Heath on the Norfolk coast. And looking forward to observing under those dark skies and with some amazing telescopes as well. So I'll jump in the car and I'll see you in a few hours. So a warm welcome, not this time to the Refreshing Views Observatory, but to the dark skies of Kelling Heath on the North Norfolk coast. I'm setting up my borrowed 80mm uh, uh, APO refractor. I borrowed this from a friend and the weather looks quite nice so we're keeping our fingers crossed for clear skies tonight. The first night was beautifully clear and I was observing until the small hours of the morning. So good morning, you join me on a very damp and sleepy morning and I've got my cup of tea. We're in the tent today, we had a beautifully clear night last night. Stars visible from horizon to horizon despite a few local sources of light pollution, wonderful views. And I'm slowly waking up now, uh, having had about five hours, having had about five hours sleep last night. So I had a great time observing the Cygnus wall with the little refractor. And then in the small hours of the morning, sketch the Sword of Orion. It's a really nice view, it's lovely dark skies, despite a few local sources of light pollution. But oh my goodness, the dew, the dew was so heavy. Everything was absolutely dripping, even with the heaters on full blast. So at home, I'm normally observing by myself, but the joy of being at a star party is seeing other people's setups, other people's telescopes. Is. The yeah. whole telescope was built in 2016. Okay. Um, Alan, did you make the mirrors yourself or did you? No, this is from um, John... Um, John Nichols? John Nichols, that's it. Up, a, up north. John Nichols, one of his mirrors. It's a oh, wow. f3.88. 20 mirror. inch? 20 inch. Half 20 meter. Inch, yeah, wow. Yeah. Right. So do you use so this at home and at star parties? A bit, but right. it is mostly at star parties. I mean, would have used it at the spring one, except it got rolled over. I probably will take it to Horwood. Um, and all, so it's really, um, you know, it's a gradual refinement. And then you can do the 30 inch. Are you, are you local or? Salisbury. Oh. So not very local. Well, local to Salisbury, I guess. There's a 12 inch F5.3. So the one I got down in my tent is just a bigger version of this, basically. Should we walk down then? That'll be good. So this is it. I'll, I'll bring it out. You can't see it, right? So what size telescope are we looking at this time? This is 20 inch. It's a 20 inch F3.9. But it's heavy. He's not <laughs> heavy. He's my telescope. This is no joke. That is so cool. I mean, have you tried, you tried moving this? Can I have again? Can you feel me? Yeah. On the wheels? No, go on, yeah. There we go. No, yes, I mean, it's possible to do it, but it's... Uh, I see what can, you mean, though, isn't you it? You can feel it's made of pretty chunky stuff. Yeah, it's a long way down but, I mean, well, you can see, it? you can see, I mean, the, 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 you know, all this is sort of laminated um, 80 millimetre plywood put together. That's beautiful, though. It's good workmanship. But, I mean, it took me a hell of a long time to build. 
It probably took, what, 15 months? Wow. We were also treated to views through a magnificent pair of 7-inch binoculars, 180mm binoculars, with these eyepiece mirror systems that bring the, bring the eyepieces together. Amazing views of Jupiter and some of the Ursa Major galaxies, even through the thin clouds, even through a little bit of mist, are absolutely beautiful views. So if you've enjoyed seeing the telescopes and the equipment I've been looking at, check us a subscribe. So I'm going to publish separate videos of each of these telescopes. My friend Keith Venables was describing his telescope. He's got a homemade 18 inch Dobsonian and he's put a camera that automatically plate solves in real time and tells the drive system where to accurately point the telescopes. Well then pass the instructions back to the Nexus. So it fine tunes that position. And moves the scope by yeah. those arc minutes. And then check it within an arc minute. Really? Arc minutes, gosh. With a true sky arc minute, yeah. Wow, that's not bad, is so it? If you're looking for some really faint fuzzy that you can't really see, but you want to stare at for 15 minutes to work. Uh, okay. Then this, this puts the, um, the scope on it. So at least you know where it is then. You know, you, you know, you know it's in the centre of the field of view. And if you use, I, I've got a GUI version with an iPad so that you can you can actually see that image that that's taken. And it will annotate the image with all the star names and ah, detail okay. objects as well. So, and draw a circle the size of the eyepiece. So it's a, lot, so it's a proper and live it's finder. A proper live well, eyepiece for you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, that 16th magnitude oh, galaxy so I'm looking thing. for is, is there, and you can go back to the eyepiece. Between those two stars or whatever. And there. And oh, they would, okay. Okay, you could do it on Sky Safari, but it's just so much easier when you know they are my field stars. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. There's no issue. There's no issue. There. That is so cool. Yeah, it, uh, yeah that, that's, it seems to work out all right. And you validated it? Do you use it? Yeah, I use it in the spring here. Yeah. Uh, it would do about, I did about 90 without it failing. So that was <laughs> 90. Nice. Yeah, happy with that then. Yeah. Saturday is the main day and this sees a whole heap of trade stands being set up. Telescopes galore, books, eyepieces, filters, whatever you need, whatever accessory you've forgotten. And the Dew Heater stand was doing a roaring business. I think he'd sold out in record time, the humidity was so bad. There was also second-hand sales of all kinds of items. I was under strict instructions not to use my credit card. So the last night was clear, but unfortunately I've been hit by a migraine, so I wasn't feeling particularly up for using my own setup. So Martin Lewis, my friend Martin Lewis, invited me around to use his telescope, and we had a great time observing some of the bright lollipop targets and also some of the faint challenging objects like Stefan's Quintet. So thank you Martin, thank you for letting me use your telescope with your friends. Really good fun, thank you. So it's time to pack up, unfortunately. We've had, what did we have? Thursday was clear briefly, Friday was beautifully clear but damp, Saturday was very grey and overcast, and last night, Sunday night, we observed till one o'clock. It's a wonderful view for an 18 inch dob, but everything is so wet. Everything is horribly wet, so I'm going to pack everything away. Of course, when I get home, I think I'll have to dry it all out again. So while I pack up, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.